Why is it that we get to read very few candid biographies of leaders in India? In 2004, a Pulitzer Prize winning historian, Gordon Wood, wrote a revealing biography of one of America's most beloved founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. In it, he told us about the many great things that Franklin had done. For instance, he wrote that Franklin negotiated a treaty with the French without which America could never have won its war of independence. He pointed out that Franklin had established lightning to be an electrical phenomenon and that he had even invented the bifocals. However, Gordon didn't stop there. He went on to tell his readers about Benjamin Franklin's many flaws. For example, he wrote that Franklin owned slaves for 30 years and that he became an abolitionist only towards the end of his life. Franklin, we learn, wanted to exclude Germans from the New World. Many prominent American leaders in his time, including James Madison, suspected Franklin's motives, believing him to be beholden either to the British or the French. Fifteen years later, a historian who decides to write something similar in India is likely to be met with several difficulties. The law of criminal defamation applies to the dead here as well. So one could face a criminal case for defaming a deceased historical figure. Authors might often be afraid of offending sentiments in India by reassessing the lives of those who have been posthumously vilified or lionized. For instance, anyone who challenges the conventional narrative that Shivaji was a hero or Aurangzeb a villain is likely to be met with abuse and legal troubles. As Audrey Trushke and James Lane found out, Jaswan Singh was expelled from the BJP when he wrote a laudatory biography of Jinnah. One would approach the task of writing a revisionist biography of Ambedkar, for instance, with extreme caution because of how he is now worshipped almost as a god in many parts of India. Additionally, biographers here can draw on only a handful of archival sources. Indian families tend not to preserve the personal papers of their forefathers, their letters, diaries and so on. There might be two reasons for this. Firstly, there are very few libraries which archive and preserve personal papers in India, unlike institutions abroad. Secondly, occupations in India very often tend to be hereditary and so the reputation of one's ancestor often affects one's present prospects. For instance, Revealing Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's personal papers today might affect Rahul Gandhi's electoral chances since anything negative about Indira Gandhi which emerges from those papers could be used by his opponents to attack Rahul Gandhi. It is here that one of Benjamin Franklin's famous sayings comes to mind. If you would not tell your secret to an enemy, tell it not to a friend.